Hello friends, welcome to video series on geography. In this video, I will be explaining about landforms which are associated with cycle of erosion, that is the landforms which are caused mainly due to cycle of erosion. The first one is fluvial landforms or landforms caused by erosional activities uh, by a river. The other one is glacial landforms, marine landforms, arid landforms and karst landforms. Karst landforms are landforms which are formed due to accumulation of limestone sediments. And the first one is fluvial landforms. Fluvial means anything relating to or found in a river. Thus fluvial landforms are landforms which are formed by river action. The river action mainly involves aggradational ones or degradational ones. The degradational action is caused mainly due to erosion whereas aggradational work is done due to deposition. And degradational action involves mainly two processes mainly namely corrosion or abrasion and attrition. Corrosion simply means that when two particles collide with the walls of the river that is the sediment rocks which are found uh, below the river surface or on the sides of the river these uh, rock particles breaks uh, the following river sediments and rocks giving rise to huge amount of debris and the process uh, involved is corrosion and in other kind that is attrition the debris uh, are struck against each other hence breaking into small, small, smaller particles and giving rise to finer debris and this process is attrition and the main landforms are erosional landforms and depositional landforms the fluvial landforms that is fluvial erosional landforms mainly starts with the formation of a river valley where the initial at the initial, initial stages where the river uh, starts from a source it mainly starts forming a v-shaped valley so let's see how a v-shaped valley is formed as water starts flowing from a source the vertical action or the vertical erosion becomes significant as a result the softer strata on the surface is completely eroded due to vertical erosion as a result a deep valley is created, a deep riverbed is created and once this riverbed or the base of the river undergoes much more erosion then it its depth increases and at a certain point of time the walls of this river, uh, river banks as they become weaker due to the complete loss of material between them they break and fall into this river which are further subjected to erosion that is due to swift flowing rivers all this uh, material which is which is falling into the rivers is simply eroded to lower uh, lower landforms giving rise to a valley which is the shape of V this successive breakage of the river banks and successive vertical erosion give rise to, gives rise to a valley which is v-shaped these kind of valleys are mainly found in mountainous regions where the river flows swiftly as a result erodes the upper softer strata the upper softer, softer rocks which can be easily eroded and at a certain point it reaches a harder strata where the erosion the vertical erosion becomes less significant as the strata below is very hard and for the erosion is very scarce so in v-shaped valley formation vertical erosion which is also called as vertical down cutting or downward erosion becomes uh, is predominant or is dominant and the source of the river shifts backwards because of edward erosion that is if a source of a river was uh, found here then there is huge amount of water coming from this source as a result the soil that is present at this stage is quickly eroded as a result this source starts shifting backwards because of the erosion of the landforms which is found below this so successive erosion shifts the source backwards and the river the formation of river valleys mainly uh, are divided into three stages based on the kind of erosion and depositional works uh, done by the river the first one is youthful uh, youthful stage where the stream flows swiftly through mountainous terrain 
giving rise to various uh, related structures like hanging valleys, waterfalls, etc. During this stage, the shape of the valley is V and the slopes are convex in shape. The slopes are convex in shape, whereas in the next stage, that is when the stream reaches a mature stage, the speed of the river significantly decreases, hence depositions becomes quite uh, significant. Due to deposition and successive erosion of material, a meandering process takes place and at this stage, the shape, the shape of the valley is U. Uh, here, in this stage, the vertical erosion as we have seen in the first stage becomes less significant and the lateral erosion, that is erosion of the slopes, becomes quite significant in this stage. As a result, the, slope, the sides or slopes are completely eroded giving rise to a V-shaped valley. And this erosion keeps on happening and gives rise to a broadened base and a broad view shaped valley is produced at the final stages of the river which is called as old stage and at this stage the formation of meandering is complete and structures called oxbow lakes emerge so we'll study in detail the formation of meanders and oxbow lakes on in the next stages so in the final stage the shape of the valley is still u shaped but with a very broad base and at the end of the river where the river deposits all its uh, uh, silt near the mouth of the river it gives rise to uh, landforms like deltas which signify the final stage of the river so in the initial stages that is during youthful stage vertical erosion is dominant whereas in the later stages that is during mature stage and during old stage lateral erosion becomes dominant we have seen lateral erosion is the erosion of slopes where slopes are ero eroded that is when slopes of a river er are eroded then it, it is called lateral erosion and if base of the river is eroded then it is called as vertical erosion so we can see different stages of valley formation initially it is a v-shaped valley then it becomes u-shaped once in the youthful stage and the base of the valley broadens giving rise to a extended u-shaped valley at the final stages of the uh, final stages of the river and few associated landforms are waterfalls where water received from various hanging valleys that is different uh, streams or tributaries uh, which flow along the rivers along the mountains give rise to a major stream and due to different erosion differential erosion of rock strata there we can see that the soft rock material is eroded intensely as a result a deep landform is created which gives rise to a waterfall this is because the upper hard rock is comparatively less undergoes less erosion whereas the softer rock undergoes intense erosion giving rise to differences in depths which give rise to a waterfall one example is joke falls or gersopa falls in sharavati along the sharavati river which is the tributary of kaveri and the height of these falls is 260 meters it is the highest waterfall in india it is in karnataka state and coming to the next major landforms, they are potholes. Potholes are mainly formed when a small crack or a hole, cylindrical hole in a water, in a on the river bed, undergoes intense amount of erosion due to swelling motion of water and and uh, and alongside the swelling motion of rocks, which cuts a uh, huge, a uh, cylindrical uh, cylinder shaped holes. As we can see in this figure, these are called uh, potholes. And the other one is terraces. Terraces are the ones landforms which represent the level of former valley. That is, the river in, it, in its youthful stage has a very, uh, dif uh, very different course where it is much upwards. Whereas, as the stage of the river gets uh, older, where it becomes an older river, it keeps on uh, cutting downwards. That is, vertical erosion becomes significant. As a result. The course of the river shifts as the, as long as there is a uh, landmass which can be vertically eroded. Initially, the course of the river was here. As vertical erosion became significant in this direction, the course of the river shifted and the main flow of the river occurs in this stage. 
hence a terrace kind of landform is for, uh, formed due to uh, shifting course of the river where it finds a softer rock strata which can be eroded and this kind of a system produces a terrace like structure as we can see in this figure these mainly indicate the levels of former valley flows and the remnants of former or older flood plains and other important landforms are gullies, rills and ravines these are rills that is small streams which are formed due to erosion of water during uh, intense rains and with um, passage of many years these rills give forms gullies that is broadened and much bigger rills and gullies gives rise to ravines one good example is Ch chambal ravines that is this is the upper peninsula river and as this river flows in a semi arid region it gives rise to these kind of landforms which are which are which are uh, called ravines or gullies the most common in semi arid areas and one fine example is the ravines of chambal valley in central india and the most important of the fluvial landforms are the meanders and oxbow lakes let's see from this diagram how a meander is formed we can see the river uh, takes a curvy path as lot of silt is deposited along the banks of the river uh, during a period of time as most of the silt which is carried from the upper streams that is from mountainous terrain is deposited when it reaches the plains there is huge amount of erosion erosion lateral erosion of this silt along the curves uh, curvy path of, of the river we can see there are various curvy paths for example one uh, this is the first curve this is second biggest curve and third curve let's study along these curves how erosion process uh, causes meanders and oxbow lakes in the first position we can see that the outer curve undergoes extensive erosion as the flow of water is directed towards the outer curve as a result the erosion along this curve becomes prominent and lot of material is eroded likewise the erosion along this curve the outer curve becomes significant when it comes to curve 2 and as the river carries lot of silt and this uh, side is eroded the inward side or this one undergoes deposition process the same thing happens at the third curve too the inner curve where the wa water hits the walls of the curve becomes eroded and the other side undergoes deposition process and this process continues in this direction and this curve keeps on eroding the material and this curve also keeps on eroding eroding the material in this direction finally at a certain point of time they come very closer and after successive erosional processes finally all the, the amount of uh, all the soil between these uh, two uh, curves is completely eroded and now the stream takes a the team the stream takes a different path where at the form of bigger curve is completely a devoid of water water flow as a result it is completely separated from the mainstream and as the water along the mainstream bec uh, becomes significant there is huge amount of depositions happening along the ends of this uh, whole curve as a result at a certain point of time the deposits in completely close the two ends of the curve giving rise to a oxbow lake and meander is simply uh, this big curve which is formed due to successive erosional processes and finally it is separated and gives rise to an oxbow lake and one more important landform is peneplain peneplain is formed both due to wind action as well as water action and these kind of plains are mainly formed in uh, arid regions this is an undulating feature pl featureless plain featureless simply means that there is no quite a significant relief it, it is mainly composed of a single type of relief whereas undulating means wave like pattern through longer distances if you observe these planes have a kind of wave like pattern and this is the end product of an erosional cycle this is because of little gradient or uh, because of little gradient where over a distance of few kilometers the gradient changes only by centimeters or, or just by 10 to 20 centimeters as a result the flow of water or wind is very slow or it doesn't facilitate the, the erosion of the upper material 
and this kind of penny planes will we can see only few features like resistant rocks which remain uh, due to differential erosion of the rocks and the plane uh, one example is Ios rock in Australia this rock is found in Australia which is known for its changing colors during different times of the day 